guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2023 Nissan Leaf SV Plus. And huge thanks to Red at Courtesy Nissan in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Red. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Leaf has been Nissan's fully electric compact hatchback since 2011. That's when the first generation was released. The second generation that you see here was released in 2018. Facelifted this year for 2023, featuring a revised front bumper, grille, and exterior lighting, as well as new multi-spoke rims that you see here, and an illuminated Nissan badge. The 2023 Leaf is cut down to two trim levels, both being front-wheel drive, starting with the base S with a base price of 28,000 bucks, featuring a 40 kilowatt hour battery and 110 kilowatt electric motor, cranking out 147 horsepower, enough to get the Leaf to 60 in 7.4 seconds. Standard features on the S feature e-pedal regenerative braking, Nissan Safety Shield 360, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. The SV Plus that you see here is the top trim for the 2023 Leaf with a base price of 36 k Here we get an upgraded 60 kilowatt hour battery with a 160 kilowatt motor, cranking out 214 horsepower. Enough to get this Leaf if you can get the traction down to 60 between six and six and a half seconds. With the SV Plus, not only do we get the higher output motor, we get the higher output charger too, navigation and pro pilot assist. With the base price of 36,000 bucks, what else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your fully redesigned front styling, new grill, new lighting, and new accents down below. I apologize, we're at the airport right now, so there's gonna be quite a bit of noise. There's really nowhere else to get any emptiness out here in downtown Tampa, but this airport. But bear with me guys, full LED lighting, LED for the high and low beam and daytime running strip. We get a halogen turn signal up front, LED fog lights, and personally, I really like this front styling. The grill, it's not just the black trim. I'm gonna move in a little bit closer. Hopefully you can pick up that design in the corner. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. This white metallic paint is also beautiful in this Florida sun. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly the name of the paint color. Charge port, all new illuminated Nissan badge with a forward facing camera right beneath. Continuing along, this wheel and tire setup, we get these really funky multi-spoke 17-inch rims with the black and silver contrast, wrapped in Michelin Energy Saver all-season tires, dimensions being 215-50 R17. So the 50 series sidewall should help the ride quality quite a bit, but with pretty healthy amount of power, 214 horsepower, it'll be interesting to see if these 215s can actually put the power down. I like that we don't have any plastic cladding for this all new leaf. The rocker panel side skirt area has a pretty aggressive side skirt, blacked out mirror with an additional camera on it. The glass has blind spot monitoring on it. The glass fills up just about the entire frame. Black window trim, blacked out roof to this. SV Plus has a really clean look for an EV. Definitely one of the nicest looking entry level EVs on the road today. Same rear wheel and tire setup. We have full LED taillights. However, the turn signals are halogen. The leaf badge is gunmetal gray, full rear parking sensing, updated Nissan badge, SV Plus in the corner. Shout out courtesy Nissan here in Tampa for helping make this review possible. The rear diffuser area is pretty aggressive, but again, this is an EV, so no exhaust tips. We're not going to fire anything up. Let's pop the latch for the hood, check out the battery and the electric motor here, and I'll catch right back with you. All right, guys, here you have the battery and electric motor set up for the 2023 Leaf cranking out 214 horsepower, getting about the same when it comes to range. I believe it can get up to 212 miles of range. I know it's down compared to some other EVs on the road today, but for an entry level EV, basically loaded with features, I actually think 200 plus miles of range is very acceptable. What you see is basically what we get. We can shut this hood right down. It's pretty heavy. We don't get hydraulic struts, gotta have to deal with the prop rod, but really not a big deal with a sub $40,000 EV. Charge port right up front, as we mentioned. Interior wise, Let's hop out inside or hop inside this 2023 top trim Leaf SV Plus and see what we get. So even though this is a top trim Leaf, the top part of the door panel is still hard plastic. We get leatherette for the center, aluminum door handle, auto one touch for the driver, but that's it. Still power windows for the passenger, four way adjustable mirrors. The armrest is pretty soft, but it's cloth. I would expect the leather armrest and I would expect leatherette at least seats for a top trim that costs $8,000 more than the base for the starting price. The storage is impressive. You may be able to squeeze a foot long in there and a 24 ounce water bottle will fit there, no problem. Leaf, nameplate, as we step inside the seats, as you mentioned, are cloth. They're blue, contrasted, fully adjustable, and they're electrically adjustable. Lumbar control, you can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. Taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So foot on the brake, battery start stop, and just like the Ari we just reviewed, I like how the start stop has like an electronic button, which looks like a household appliance. But anyway, 
First thing you notice is the steering wheel. It's leather wrapped and updated. We get the flat bottom, updated Nissan badge. The horn area is hard plastic, but rubberized. The horn itself, pretty aggressive sounding horn. Basically the exact same horn sound out of the Aria. The steering wheel gets blue contrast stitching. Hopefully I can pick it up for you guys on camera. On the left side, volume and skip adjustments, plus your infotainment adjustments on the right side, cruise control, voice commands, and you hang up and answer your phone calls with the Safety Shield 360 for the Nissan cars. As far as infotainment adjustments, right now we're looking at a power indicator. Beneath that, our charge time. Beneath that, battery temperature, battery capacity, and right back where we started. We can move over to the music, check out a turn-by-turn -turn and a compass if the GPS is hooked up, average fuel economy, and our miles per kilowatt energy meter. Moving over one more time, we have our information with digital speedo, the compass right above, music beneath that. We can alternate also between TPMS, above that driver heads up assistance. And the final screen is the advanced safety feature screen with our forward sensing and blind spot sensing. All can be seen through the screen. Moving over one more time, our overall settings, you can see everything that can be adjustable with this 2023 Leaf. My personal favorite to look at at all times would be this power indicator. In the center, we have an additional LCD display that shows us what gear we're currently in, clock, temperature outside, the 120 mile an hour speedometer on the right side. The stocks, satisfying click, auto headlamps, and we have fog lights, but not automatic, auto high beams on the right side. No rain sensing wipers, but wouldn't be expected with a vehicle in this price point. To the left, we have our interior brightness, charge port release, you can turn off the charge port, heated steering wheel, and our active steering for the cruise control. The tilt and telescoping latch is right here on the left side of the steering wheel, Hopefully you can get a good idea of the pedals. The dashboard is all completely hard plastic air vents right above your eight inch touchscreen. You can check out the map by pressing the map button. We do get navigation here, standard on the SV, but the screen itself is a little bit dated. It's a nice screen. It's better than Nissan from like four or five years ago, but compared to their new 12.3 inch screen, it's just not nearly as high resolution or high response. One thing I find interesting is it says 61 degrees Fahrenheit on the screen, but it says 77 degrees Fahrenheit on the gauge display. So I'm not quite sure if this vehicle has two different thermometers, but what you see is basically what we get. Dual zone, automatic climate control, heated front seats, USB-A and C port, and a 12 volt good spot for a radar detector because this vehicle is actually surprisingly quick. No wireless charging pad standard. We have eco mode and our e-pedal regenerative braking. Pretty funky gear selector. So to put it into reverse, you gotta put the park meter to the left and then push forward push up now we have a 360 camera and a backup camera not the best resolution but good enough guidance lines and trajectory throw right back into park by pressing the button a little bit of piano black surrounding it the materials for your knee will often hit are a leather wrap trim thumbs up to nissan for that electron parking brake two cup holders i'd expect you to fit 20 maybe 24 ounce bottles in there we do get a leatherette really well padded armrest also a thumbs up for nissan i just wish this material was continued for the armrests on the door panel the storage not the most i would expect you to fit two maybe three water bottles in there not the most not the worst can't complain the glove box space we can pull this latch it is damped not lined with felt and not the largest i'd expect you to fit 10 to 15 license plates if it's wide enough you'll fit a pair of shoes if you're under a size 10 above that more of that funky plastic trim hopefully you can pick it up on camera i apologize for the glare the sun is starting to pound right down on us that's really about it though for this front seat outside of the auto dimming rear view mirror which is also appreciated sunglass holder interior lights are led with a cloth felt headliner cool that's about it for the front seat guys we can check out the window sticker real quick see any features that i may have missed on this 2023 nissan leaf sv plus about the 212 miles of range you can pause take a look at all the standard features pretty well loaded for a base price at thirty six thousand bucks options 230 for the splash guards 275 for the floor mats 120 for the cup holders and stash tray 160 for the kick plates 100 for the safety kit and a two-tone premium paint is 700 dollars after an 1100 dollars destination we're totaled out a tick under thirty nine thousand bucks fuel economy as you see 212 miles of range 121 city 98 mpg E on the highway that's about it though for the window stick before we hop out back one thing i also like is how nissan gives us these additional windows in both corners up front that helps visibility quite a bit almost reminds me of a new generation f-150 with the way the window slopes down quite a bit allowing you to have a lot better visibility nissan thought it through too give you a little bit extra with that additional window that's about it though for the front seat let's hop out back see how much space is offered back there 
check out the cargo space and then take this car out for a drive so materials here all hard plastic for the door panel except for the armrest which has a little bit of padding and some cloth trim above it power window aluminum door handle speaker and you'll fit a big gulp in that massive cup holder down below aluminum kick plate as you step inside it's not labeled leaf like it was up front the seats are very similar to up front with that blue contrast solid bolster even for a back seat the legroom looks impressive i'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and i still have at least five six inches in the room very comparable amount of rear passenger space to the new aria reviewed in this channel and you're saving quite a bit of money compared to that vehicle headroom i have about an inch maybe a little bit more before my head was starting to touch. So if you're under six foot four, you should be able to sit behind your seat settings with no problem. No map pack behind the driver, we get a map pack behind the passenger. Two uh, charge ports are both USB-A, no USB-C back here with some storage down below the cup holders located in this center area. One thing I don't really like is how this hump will take up basically all the middle passenger's footroom, but you still have access to cup holders if you see three back here. Whereas if you had the center console, cup holder and you had somebody sitting in the center obviously you wouldn't be able to use that cup holder here you have someone sitting in the center you can still put the cups in between their legs the interior light back here doesn't appear to be led but still does its job no air vents back here either for a top sv trim it would be nice to get air vents but i'm sure we have something going on under the seat just nothing blowing directly into our face that's about it though for the back seat let's hop out into the cargo space see how much space is offered back there and then take this 2023 redesigned leaf sv plus out for a drive as soon as i figure out where this button is all right there we go so right underneath the nissan badge is a button we don't have an electrically opening tailgate but the button helps us access the hydraulically opening struts the floor pretty large it's a comparable size floor to the aria it's just the way that it's designed not very pet friendly as far as grocery bags though i think it's way more friendly as we have this pretty tall ledge preventing the grocery bags from really sliding around we don't have the longest wheel wall cutouts. We only actually have a wheel wall cut on the right side, nothing going on out rear. So for a golf bag, you may have to fold the back seats down. But if you fold the back seats down, I'd expect you to fit up to a 60 inch TV back here. Very spacious, not quite as spacious as the Aria. But if you don't, if you don't need the top level space, you just need the EV and you want to save five, 10,000 bucks, this is still more than spacious enough. We can drop this trunk right down. It's not a power opening, not a power closed trunk, but really not a big deal. It's not very heavy. We could walk around this 2023 Leaf one more time. It's a really nice car for the money. If I had mentioned, we have smart access for the driver and a front passenger. But again, considering the features, 360 camera, upgraded sound system, upgraded power plant. And speaking of the upgraded power plant, let's take this 2023 Nissan Leaf SV Plus out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new redesigned 2023 Nissan Leaf SV Plus. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. And my first impressions are that although light, the steering feels very direct and on center. And unlike the Aria with a very sharp brake pedal feel, this vehicle does not have nearly as sharp of a brake pedal. However, we're currently not in the e-pedal you put into e-pedal with the regenerative braking help you helping you out the brake pedal will feel far far stronger but here you got to really lean into it. it reminds me a little bit of a heavy duty truck the brake pedal feel but taking a step out here lean into it about halfway good torque traction control is kicking in with half throttle that's what i was saying these 215 wide tires they're not putting down the power with this really powerful 214 horsepower electric motor 214 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot but considering that we're probably making closer to 300 pound feet of torque here it's just not enough for 215 wide tires i had 215 wide tires on my 20 or 2018 acura ilx which had honda's 2.4 liter four cylinder making like 201 horsepower and that vehicle too was basically it was basically impossible to put all the power to the ground here very similar especially since we have all the torque right away look at that boom traction control kicks in but it just takes off turning radius and body roll we'll check it out body roll is definitely more compared to the aria we reviewed but the turning radius is just as good if not stronger there goes the pamphlet for the vehicle and coming out Woo! traction control again yeah it's gonna be kicking in the whole time like the, the power just does not want to get put down very well with this front wheel drive platform i wish they gave us all wheel drive with this sv plus the regular s may put the power down better with a smaller 40 kilowatt hour battery but with the 60 kilowatt hour battery and 160 kilowatt hour electric motor it is tough to put the power down at least completely 
We'll try out one more acceleration off the line in normal mode. Oh my God, it just kicks in. But like I said, it's limiting the power. I don't see any button to turn traction control off. So it looks like it's just permanently on. And even, even if you turned it off, you'd do nothing but just burn up your tires. Probably go through a set once every couple months if you want to keep the traction control off. Even with traction control on, it allows you to spin the tires pretty noticeably. All right, guys, one more time off the line. I'm going to try to get a good launch this time. No wheel spin. There we go. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin, but let's go. Yeah, up until like 50 miles an hour, it's literally fighting for traction. Once you're at speed, we'll slow down a little bit. We'll just check out the torque off the roll. Let me guess. Look, the trash control kicks in on a 40 roll. Yeah, Nissan, this is a great platform, great price point. But if you offer this vehicle with all-wheel drive or maybe even like 245 wide tires up front, I understand that's a little bit too aggressive for a vehicle like this. So I understand why you don't put wider tires, but give us all-wheel drive. This is just too much power for two-wheel drive. Handling-wise though, steering feels really good. Well, everything's just flying around. It is a well-handling vehicle. The electric motors and batteries help the center of gravity. And you can tell by the way this thing handles. All right, guys, taking a step out here, we can open her up a little bit more, get situated, and lean into it. Yeah, the, guys, this thing can move really well. It's pretty quiet at speed, too. It's not as quiet as the Aria with the dual pane windows, but it's almost up there. The steering feels very good through the turn. Nissan, historically, has had pretty good steering racks but their electric racks have been a little bit suspect here. Not the case at all. The only thing that's a little bit suspect is the brake pedal. But speaking of the brake pedal, let's turn on E-pedal and let's turn on Eco mode and we'll see what the differences are. All right, guys, real world turning radius now in Eco mode with the E-pedal on. Eco mode on the gas. Still spinning the tires a little bit, but it feels like it puts the power down actually better. Not bad. And with the one pedal drive, you slow down speed very quickly through the turn eco mode the steering feels about the same maybe a tad bit lighter the gas pedal feels a lot more dead which makes it feel like it puts the power down a lot better so that basically solved a lot of the issues here in regular mode it's just really sensitive for the skinny tires but in eco mode that's what that's what you buy this vehicle for with the e-pedal e i'm not even on the brakes right now we're going to come to a complete stop well short of where we need to go a little bit quicker through the turn feel strong coming out yeah, the gas pedal is way more dead in eco mode, significantly more dead, and the e-pedal works really well. Overall, guys, if you're looking for a EV, but you want to save like $10,000, 10 plus thousand dollars compared to the competition, definitely check out the Nissan Leaf. However, don't expect it to be as performance ready as say vehicles like a Ford Mach-E, Tesla Model Y, Tesla Model 3, or even vehicles like the Nissan Aria they just released. That Those vehicles all feel a step above when it comes to refinement and quality. This, however, you'll save five, ten thousand bucks. So if you don't plan on taking your EV zero to 60 every single day, you just want a nice commuter that can give you 200 miles of range, comfortable amounts of space, loaded with features, navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a good sound system, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 Nissan Leaf. Check out both. Check out the S and check out the SV because the S, yeah, it only has 147 horsepower. It doesn't sound like a lot, but zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds. That's respectable time for zero to 60 in a sub $30,000 base price. Here, we'll do zero to 60 between six and six and a half seconds, but honestly, with the way that it puts the power down, good luck. Yes, you throw some stickies on this car, which I'm sure nobody will do. You could probably get a sub six seconds here to 60 time. But either way, if you're looking for the best bang for the buck, check out the S. If you want a little bit more power, a little more features and styling cues, check out the SV. Either way, you're saving thousands of dollars compared to the competition. And a big thanks to Red at Courtesy Nissan in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Red. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like, too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.